Ah, good day there, King's Kids. Arnie here from Arnie's Shack. I am so happy to have the members of God's royal family back here again for another season of King's Kids. Ah, I have just done some renovations on my shack. I hope you like them. Ah, the story we are looking at from the Bible today is from Acts chapter 1. Uh, it's about when a new disciple was going to be chosen. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with it. some amazing things. The stories are just incredible. Well, Sammy, I would really love to explore the Bible more too. Sammy, do you think that is something we could try together? For sure, Gemma. So, are you ready for an adventure then? Yep, I sure am. Well, let's look at the New Testament and start in Acts chapter 1. Okay, let's open the Bible and see what we can learn today. Sammy, what's happening here? There are heaps of people in this room. What are they here for? I think there are about 120 people here today. See that guy over there who looks like he's about to speak? Well, that is Peter, one of Jesus' disciples. They are about to have a very important meeting. This place is called the Upper Room. The Upper Room? I've heard of that place. Isn't this where Jesus and his disciples had the Last Supper? Yes, that's right. That was six weeks ago. The disciples are back here again, but one of them is missing. Oh, really? Who is missing? Well, it's actually a pretty sad story. Judas is the disciple who is missing. He was one of Jesus' closest friends, one of his 12 very special disciples. Anyway, Judas betrayed Jesus and got some money for it. The disciples were shocked that their friend had done this. They really liked and trusted Judas. They were all pretty close. After Judas betrayed him, Jesus was crucified. Being betrayed by your friend, that is really sad. I know it really hurts when friends let you down and do or say mean things to you. Yeah, sure does. Judas died after he betrayed Jesus, so the reason they are having a meeting today is to choose someone to take Judas's place as a new 12th disciple. A new 12th disciple? That is an important job. How are they going to pick someone for that? That's what I was wanting to know. Let's hang around and see if we can find out. Today we will be reading Acts 1 verse 8. You will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
Hi everyone, my name is Nurse Betty. One of the things I love to do is to teach boys and girls how to stay healthy. Today, I'd like to talk with you about staying connected. Connectedness is not just about the virtual world. It is also about how we may relate or connect with our family, our neighbours, our friends and the people in our community. During the pandemic, many of us had to learn how to use Zoom, FaceTime or other connecting apps in order for us to maintain relationships. It is important for you to connect with people, not just via social media, but also through safe interactions, person to person. Always maintain good hygiene, cough and hand washing etiquette. Enjoy the sunshine, fresh air, and the opportunity to reconnect with the family and friends you have not seen or spent time with. Boys and girls, remember that Jesus loves you. Take care of your body and take care of each other. Uh, good day there, boys and girls, and welcome along to Balloon Kaboom. And again, I've got my friend here with me, Pastor Darren. G'day there, Pastor Darren. Hi, Arnie. Oh, I did a bit of a reno over the weekend. Do you like it? Yeah, I love a bit of a, a backyard blitzer, Arnie. Yeah, yeah, well, I think it's come up really great. Uh, what are we going to be doing with the uh, balloons, Pastor Darren, today? Well, hi, boys and girls. I have a blue balloon, a winter blue. See if you can guess what it might be. So I'm going to inflate it. Um, it's not going to be a pair of skis, is it? For <laughs> snow skiing. It's something to do with winter, actually, but it, it is an animal. That's a big clue, boys and girls. I'm going to start with the head. Mm-hmm. So one bubble. Yep. Two bubbles. Two bubbles. Join them together. Yep. And the third bubble right over the top. Right, that's tricky. Join it in. Mm hmm. And then one. Yeah. Two. Two. Three bubbles. Three bubbles more. Roll this through and leave a tail. Okay, it's got a tail. I need to give it a beak. What do you reckon it might be, boys and girls? That was a big clue. And then. Yeah. It needs some feet. Some feet. I made mm. two feet earlier. Two feet you made earlier. Join them in. Yep. At the tail. There they are. They're big feet. And give it some eyes. Aye, aye. One eye. Yep. Two eyes. Yep, two eyes. And there it is. There it is, boys and girls. Well, what do you think it is? I'm going to have a guess and say it's a penguin. A penguin? Penguins are black and white, aren't you? Oh, OK. Well, let me think. Um, I actually, when I, when I was a young fella, I used to have uh, these on the farm. Pigeons. That's right. Pigeons. These are messenger pigeons. And if you study your history, especially during the wars, pigeons were an important way to communicate. There were no phones back then, so you put a message on the leg in a little canister on the pigeon and it would fly to its home and take the message sometimes hundreds of kilometres to where it had to go. Well, that, that's incredible, Pastor Darren. Just a little bird can do that. Did you know that we are messengers too? In Acts it says, you will be my messengers. You'll take my word to the then known world all over the place. Oh, and spread the gospel. That's right. We can be God's messengers too. Yes, we can, Pastor Darren. And boys and girls, you can be too. Tell others about Jesus and his love and what he's doing for us. Would you like to take my blue bar pigeon home? Yeah, I'd love to, uh, Pastor Darren. I think I'll call him Bluey. <laughs> Bluey the pigeon. Well, anyway, boys and girls, uh, we've got to go now. So from Balloon Kaboom, uh, we'll catch you next time. See you, Pastor Darren. Bye, Arnie. Bye, boys and girls. See ya. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Granny Grace, and I'm going to tell you a story from God's special book. Peter was puzzled. His friend Jesus had died on the cross and then risen again. But now Jesus had been taken up, up, up into the sky to go back to his Father in heaven. Before he left, Jesus had told Peter and the other disciples to go out and tell the whole world that Jesus loved them and would come again one day. 
But Peter needed a new disciple to join him and the other disciples in sharing this good news. Because Judas had betrayed Jesus, he was no longer with them. Peter wondered who they should choose, so he called all the believers together for a meeting. There were 120 of them all squashed into one room. Peter said to the people, We need someone to take the place of Judas, but it must be someone who knew Jesus well. It must be someone who travelled with Jesus. It must be someone who heard Jesus preach. It must be someone who saw him heal the sick. Yes, said another disciple, and it must be someone who saw him die on the cross. It must be someone who saw him after he rose from the dead. Yes, said Peter. It must be someone who knew Jesus very well. Someone who was a friend of Jesus. Everyone agreed. They thought of two men, Joseph and Matthias. But who should they pick? First, they prayed about it. Dear God, Show us who to choose. Then they did something very unusual. They didn't vote by putting up their hands. Oh no, they cast lots. Maybe Peter held two sticks in his hand with the men's names written on them. Covering the names, he asked someone to come and choose one of the sticks. A stick was chosen. It said, Matthias. He was the new disciple. Boys and girls, Matthias was chosen to tell others about Jesus because he knew Jesus well. You can't go somewhere to hear Jesus preach, but you can listen in church, you can read your Bible, and you can talk to Jesus by praying to him. This is how you get to know Jesus, so you can tell others about him. All the best as you grow to know Jesus better so you can serve him. Brothers and sisters, welcome. We have a very important task to do today. Jesus has asked us to be his witnesses, to tell everyone that he loves them. This is the amazing good news that we have been commissioned to spread. We have been meeting here and praying every day. I know we are still hurting over what has happened with Judas. I still find it difficult to believe he is no longer with us. But in order to fulfill the task that the master left us, we need to choose someone to take the place of Judas. This person will be the new 12th disciple. We have prayed about this. Now, what are your suggestions? What about Matthias? Yes, Matthias is a worthy candidate. What about Joseph? Joseph is also a very good man who has followed Jesus since his early times in ministry when he was baptised by John. But how are we going to decide between the both of them? Well, first of all, let's pray and then we will cast lots to decide. Lord, you know we have two amazing men here who love you so much, who have followed you from the beginning of your ministry and who want to keep on serving you. One of them is to be chosen as the 12th disciple. Please show us, Lord, who it is to be. Grandpa! So when we care for creation, we are being good stewards. Ah, yes, Shane. Ah, Taking good care of this world is one of the most important tasks God gave us. Ah, So we are God's VIPs then. Ah, Indeed we are. Ah, God says if he cares for the sparrows and flowers, how much more he cares for us. In that case, let's put our money where our mouth is. I found your wallet. Uh, You mean my money? Uh, But yes, I love giving back to God. Uh, That is good stewardship too. Uh, The righteous care for the needs of their animals. Proverbs 12, 10. 
Hi, my name's Josiah. Did you know that God gives us skills for serving Him? The best way we can find out about these skills is by getting to know Jesus, just like the disciples did. One way we can do this is by reading the Bible. So today I am going to show you how to make a cool corner piece bookmark. The things you need are some glue, some scissors, some square pieces of paper, another spare piece of paper, and some pens. Take a square piece of paper and start by folding it in half to make a triangle. Make sure it's neat. Next, fold the bottom corner up to the top corner. Do this on the other side too. Now fold these back down and fold one of the top bits to the middle. Now take one side and flip it over to here. Now tuck it into the pocket. Do the same with the other side. Now, cut out some ears. You can fold the piece of paper in half that you're going to do and then cut one ear out. When you do that, you will see that there will be two ears joined together. Cut it through the middle and now get your glue and stick the bottom part of the front of your ear onto the inside of the pocket. Do the same with the other ear. Now it's time to draw on a little heart nose. And now colour in the middle of the ears as well. Now add some little black eyes. Now you can add some whiskers. Now I'm finished. Why don't you try making one yourself at home? So Sally, what does it mean to cast lots? Well, this is a process in the Bible that they used to use. It's like they had two sticks. One was shorter than the other, or had some sort of special mark on it. The person who selected the marked stick would be the one chosen. Well, let's watch and see if it's going to be a Matthias or Joseph. Look, Peter has the two sticks. I wonder which person will be selected. Matthias, you have been chosen as the twelfth disciple. May the Lord be with you as you continue his work. Looks like Matthias has been chosen to be the 12th disciple. Do you think Joseph will be sad that he missed out? Well, I guess he may be a bit disappointed. Let's listen to what Peter is saying. Joseph, don't ever think that because you have not been selected for this role, that you are any less valuable to Jesus. He loves us all so very much. He knows us better than we know ourselves and he has created us all with unique gifts and talents. Keep following where he is leading you, Joseph, and you will discover the amazing plans he has for you. Well, that is pretty interesting. Do you really think, Sammy, that Jesus has a special plan for each of us too? Of course he does, Gemma. Wow, that is great. I am going to keep following Jesus. I want to discover his special plans for me. 
Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the 11 apostles. Acts 1, 12, 26. Oh, I'm going to start summarising, and we will take turns. But let's pray first. Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. The apostles were on the Mount of Olives, and they walked back to Jerusalem where they were staying and went upstairs. There were 11 of the apostles present, and they joined in prayer with all the other people that were in the room. There was about 120 of them. The scripture had to be fulfilled. This scripture is about how Judas helped get Jesus arrested, and he was one of the disciples. And with the money that Judas got, he bought a farm. Uh, but later on, he had an accident there and bled to death. And after that, the farm was called Field of Blood. And no one ever lived there again. And back in the upper room, they decided that they must choose from one of the men who was with them from the beginning to when Jesus was crucified. They chose two men, Joseph and Matthias. And then they prayed, God, show us which you have chosen. Then they cast lots and Matthias was chosen. So he became an apostle. Hey, Andy, what's new? This word lots, I'm not sure what that is. Hmm, I think we might have to ask Grandpa about that one. I think that's a really good idea. So, Shane, what surprises you? Well, what surprises me is that there were about 120 people in the room. Yeah, that's a lot. 120 people wouldn't fit in my lounge room. Yeah, uh, not in mine either. Hey, Andy, what don't you understand? You know what? I don't understand why they had to choose someone that had been with them all along. Couldn't they just choose anyone? Can't God use us all? Yes, God can use anyone. But in this instance, God needed someone with background knowledge of the past. Oh, well, yeah, I guess that's true, isn't it? So, Shane, what will you obey or apply? Well, to always obey God's teaching and accept that when God chooses someone else over me for a task, that I'm still valuable and he has a special job for me too. Oh, cool. I wonder what God's special job for me is. Yeah, I say he's got a really good one. Now, Andy, what will you share with someone this week? Well, Shane, you know what? I've been thinking about this one and this passage has me stuck. I'm not sure, but I'm going to pray about it and let God lead in what I share and with who. I'm going to pray that God guides us both in what we're going to share this week. Andy? Yeah, thanks for that, Shane. Shall we pray now to finish? Oh, yes, please. Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. Amen. Amen, Andy. Three, he died to set me free And for I 
Now that's pretty cool, isn't it? Our God has a special plan for each one of us. Uh, he loves us all so very much. Uh, make sure that today you spend some time talking to Jesus and asking him to show you the special plan he has prepared just for you. Uh, remember, if you are not chosen to do the job you thought you were going to do, uh, don't worry. Uh, just look out for what other opportunities uh, there are instead and remember the story about Joseph and Matthias. Uh, anyway, it's time to go now, King's Kids. I'll catch you all next time. Stay safe and God bless. Isn't it just